Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So, if you want to level up your own skills, or if you want to get a job in the industry, my best tip is always gain more experience. The more code you write, the more systems you build, the more games you make, the more experience you get, so things become much, much easier. If you want to learn, then I highly recommend you build a whole bunch of systems. And if you're looking for a job, I highly recommend you set up a nice portfolio that showcases some nice systems that you can build in order to showcase your skills, everything that you know. However, whenever I say that, while that advice is good, it might be a little bit too ambiguous. So if I just say, go make systems, you might not actually know, okay, what exactly do I make? So here, let's see a whole bunch of systems that I recommend you make. And by building all of these, you will be able to A, gain a lot of experience, and B, showcase that experience to potential employers or something like that. Someone asked me a question on this topic. So here, Zeke asks, so hey, CodeMonkey, sort of inspired by your exercise on the companion course, I'm wondering if you could give me some ideas of systems that might be challenging to develop and impressive on a gameplay slash systems programming resume. Things that I could go out and build to showcase some technical know-how and the ability to solve hard problems. So yep, I think this is excellent. I think building systems like this is a great way to really showcase everything that you know. Personally, I'm not a recruiter. I've never actually had to hire someone. But I imagine if I was, I would definitely value someone actually having a portfolio of complex systems. I imagine I would value that quite a lot more as opposed to just having a diploma from some kind of university. Now, before I tell you some very specific systems you could build, let me just say that since the goal here is really to showcase your skills, because now the systems that I'm going to mention are more on the, let's say, intermediate to advanced stage, since, of course, if you're making a portfolio, if you're trying to get a job, then it kind of helps to actually showcase some complex know-how. You wouldn't really make a portfolio with super basic stuff. Although if you are a complete beginner, then very quickly, here are some systems that I think you can build. So here are some nice beginner level systems. So for example, a health system, that is a very basic one, definitely a nice beginner system. You really just got some kind of health, then some functions to either damage the health or heal some damage. I've got a nice health system tutorial that I made previously. So you have a very simple one, then an experience system, kind of a similar thing. So you need to store some kind of experience amount, maybe also some kind of level. And then you need some kind of function to add experience, add a certain amount of experience, and after a while, you'll level up. I also have a nice level system tutorial that I did quite a while ago. Then you can also do some simple enemy AI. So this one, at the most simplest level, it is really just a state machine, that's it. This kind of AI, a very basic state machine, is definitely something that anyone, even complete beginners, can build. And some kind of inventory system. So this is one that you can definitely make it too complex, but the simplest version of all, that one can definitely be done by a beginner. So if you are a beginner, go ahead and start off with these systems. But if you are more in the intermediate level, then let's see what you can do. So here, like I said, so great question. Personally, something that I really enjoyed making from a programming standpoint was my house building system. And if this is definitely one of my favorite systems that I've ever built, I really enjoyed making this. It's all based on a nice grid system, then built on top of that, really just building all kinds of parts. And using those, you can build a really nice house. This one involves learning about a grid system, which involves probably learning about generics. It involves learning how to organize pieces, how to store that, that and do all that. It involves placing things and figuring out, okay, can I place this object on this type or not? So yeah, this is definitely a system that I really enjoyed making myself. I really enjoyed making this. And if you were to build this from scratch, it would definitely showcase your nice programming skills. And like I continue here, so it's relatively complex and code heavy. And if that's too simple, then look at Valheim and try to recreate that system with all those features. I did just that. I expand upon that system to make it work in first and third person, just like Valheim. But still, the way that I did it is still relatively simple. The actual Valheim building system, this one is really complex. It actually requires supports. You cannot put too much stuff, otherwise the whole thing comes crashing down. So it is a very fascinating system, definitely quite a bit more complex. So if you want to take it to the next level, yep, go ahead and implement all of these features. Then alternatively, something similar to that is making a mini factory game. That is a genre that is heavy on interconnected systems, which requires quite a bit of programming skill. And yep, factory games are definitely very complex. They've got quite a lot of systems and the whole thing has to be well built. Otherwise you won't actually reach the end. I've got a nice little mini factory game that I did as part of a sort of mini game jam that I made myself in a few hours. Once again, this one also uses a nice grid system. It requires quite a lot of logic for setting up all the conveyor belts, making sure that all the items move and they don't actually overlap one another. I remember that was actually quite difficult to make. So yeah, this right here, if you manage to build this from scratch, that would definitely showcase you have quite a lot of programming prowess. You can make something relatively simple like the mini game that I did here. This is relatively simple, but again, still definitely showcase you've got some very good programming skills. Or of course, if you want to go crazy, then just go ahead, play Factorio, look at it, and try to remake some parts of this. This game is definitely a programming masterpiece. I have no idea how on earth does this game run? How does it have so many pieces and the whole thing works very well? Say, so yeah, if you want to go insane and really showcase your programming skills, then building a something close to the scale of Factorio, that would definitely showcase you are a very capable programmer. Then for next system, so perhaps implement some interesting cloud game mechanics. So these involve lots of skills like learning how to work with the cloud, which is a relatively complex and very valuable skill to a lot of companies. And if nowadays pretty much every company or every big tech company is going to have some kind of cloud infrastructure. So showcasing that you actually know how to use the cloud, that can be a massive boon. And if you like making games, then one great way to learn is basically apply cloud, but to games. So I've got a video where I basically learned the Azure basics. 
Again, I made this video mostly for myself just because I wanted to learn how the cloud works because I had never touched any kind of cloud infrastructure before this point. So I just went ahead, I Googled, I just picked Azure just because, just because it's one of the biggest ones. So I just picked that and learned how to use it and learned how to make a nice web app. It's definitely one of those things that before you look at it, it seems insanely intimidating. I mean, just look at all of these services, all of these things. If you just look at this as a glance, there are so many things within the cloud as a whole that it definitely seems very insurmountable. But after you get into it, it definitely does become quite a bit more understandable. So you can watch this tutorial that I made. This one will teach you the basics of Azure. And then more specifically related to games, I've got a this nice video. I really enjoyed making this video where I basically built five unique game mechanics using the cloud. So I made some nice async multiplayer. I made a shared world kind of like Elden Ring. I made a nice modding tool. I made nice histograms. So a bunch of things, all of them based on the cloud. So yep, if you were to build all this, that would definitely showcase to potential employers that A, you are a very skilled program because you definitely need to in order to be able to build these systems. And B, you actually know a very valuable skill set, which is the cloud. So yep, I do think building this and putting this on your portfolio, I do think that would be very, very valuable. Then continuing, so maybe implement some modding that allows players to load custom DLLs or some Lua code and have it interact with the game. So this is basically making a modding system. So basically take some kind of mini game that you already built and then add modding support onto it. Or maybe actually some third party game and add modding support onto that. There are quite a lot of games that can have some very complex modding support. So if you showcase that you can do that, that you can take an existing game and basically add modding support onto it so that players can add all kinds of things, that can be a very, very small skill set. Nowadays, user-generated content, that is a massive thing. There are some games that pretty much live forever just based on UGC. For example, Roblox, it is, I'm pretty sure, literally the biggest game that exists right now. They've got something like 200 million monthly active users. That's an insane amount. And the reason why they are that insane is, again, because of that, because of user-generated content. So if you can showcase that you have the skills to add modding to a game, I believe that can definitely be a very valuable thing. So I've got a nice video tutorial where I covered how you can add mods to your games. In theory, it's actually not too complex. Basically, just have a special folder where you add some files onto it, then dynamically load those files. So if you want to mod things like sprites and textures and so on, that is usually relatively simple. Here I cover a nice six-step process on how you can implement modding onto pretty much any game. But like I said here, if you want to take that to the next level and really showcase your skills, if so, then build upon that. And instead of modding just sprites and textures, that is the easy way. Instead of that, also add the ability for players to mod custom DLLs, so custom code, or using Lua code, so interpreted code. If you add those, then the amount of mods and the complexity of the mods that you can build goes out insanely. And being able to build this, being able to dynamically load some code, that really showcases some nice programming skills. Next, maybe try making an insanely fast multi-threaded pathfinding system. You can try to make something like the excellent ASAR Pathfinding Project Pro. This is an insane asset. It is insanely fast. So if you want to showcase your programming skills, then being able to do multi-thread programming or async programming, that will definitely put you at the top of the list on pretty much whatever portfolio people are looking at. If you can showcase and you have those skills, those are very, very difficult things. So if you know how to do multi-threading and if you showcase that you know how to do multi-threading, I do think that is a very valuable skill. I've got a lecture on my c -sharp course talking about multi-threading, but this is really very much just the basics. Multi-threading would require pretty much an entire course just by itself. It is a very complex, very advanced topic, which again is really awesome because if you want to showcase your programming skills, then being able to showcase how you can handle multi-threading, that is definitely going to be very valuable. Or maybe try making some insanely fast, very performant destruction system kind of like this one. So you have this another big one. If you make a destruction system kind of like this, this is very complex, it's very difficult. So if you can build this, that will definitely showcase you do have quite a lot of skills. So you have plenty of options to build a nice portfolio, especially if you then write some small text explaining how you made each of those systems and what you learned from them. So yep, if you're trying to prepare some kind of portfolio to try to get a job as kind of a gameplay or systems programmer, if so, then building a bunch of these systems, I do believe A, that will grant you quite a lot of experience, and B, that will allow you to have a very good portfolio, which will hopefully increase your odds of finding a really nice job. But just in general, remember what I always say, the most powerful thing, the most powerful force in the world is really experience. The more code you write, the better you become, the easier things become. So whether you build these systems or other systems, I really just encourage you to build lots of stuff because everything you do will gain you more experience, which will make you more valuable and make everything in the future you want to make much, much easier. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.